Give me an open mind and a little bit of your time, and I'll prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the famous Bigfoot footage known as the Patterson-Gimlin film is 100% real, authentic, and shows a living Sasquatch. Most people know about the Patterson-Gimlin film, of course. Most people have seen it many times at this point. Most people are aware it was shot in 1967 by two men, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin, in Northern California. Most people also know that since the film was released to the public, it's been the subject of a hot debate, with many people trying to debunk it over the years to prove that it was just a man in a suit on camera, and an equal number of people on the other side of the fence trying to demonstrate that the film is authentic and does depict what it claims to depict, a living Bigfoot creature. In this video, I'm going to explain in detail why I feel the evidence weighs much more strongly on the side of the film being authentic and showing a real live Sasquatch. First of all, we have biomechanics and gait. According to anthropologist and primate expert Dr. Jeff Meldrum, the bent knee propulsion that we see from the creature in the film would be impossible, or at the very least highly impractical, for a human being, especially one in a heavy rubber suit, but even an unsuited human being. We're just not built to propel ourselves forward with that bent knee stride that you see from the creature in the film. Any attempt to do so would look very awkward, clumsy, and unnatural. And yet, for non-human primates, bent knee propulsion is much more natural. And that's why we see this natural, graceful walk from the creature in the film, even though that same style of walking for a human would look the exact opposite of graceful. We also have stride length within the propulsion and gait category. The footprints cast by Patterson and Gimlin after they filmed the creature had a 41 inch stride length on average, which is a much longer stride than an average human could comfortably copy. Even a taller than average human, 41 inches is a very long stride. I mean, I'm six feet tall. I attempted some 41 inch strides before making this video. I just wouldn't look nearly as graceful as the subject of the film does, even at my height and with rather long legs. It's just not doable for human beings in the graceful manner that we see in the film. Next, we have muscle movement beneath the skin. We're pretty good at making realistic monkey and monster suits nowadays for Hollywood movies, but we still haven't mastered the ability to recreate authentic muscle movement, the flexing and changing of shape and hardness of muscles that we see beneath the skin of real creatures, ourselves included. But in the Patterson-Gimlin film, you can clearly see that we have flexing calf muscles as the creature propels itself forward with each footstep, we see flexing thigh muscles, we see glute muscles changing and flexing, and we see rippling back muscles. None of those would be recreatable with a suit, even a really authentic one. In fact, according to two different veteran Hollywood special effects specialists, Bill Munns and John Chambers, the sort of muscle flexing beneath the skin quality that we see in the Patterson-Gimlin film would be extremely difficult and most likely impossible for a human being in a suit to replicate. That's why both of those veteran Hollywood suit makers feel that the subject of the film was not a man in a suit. Next we have body proportions. It's obvious to anyone who has seen the film that the arms of the subject are a lot longer in proportion to its body length than the arms of a human. In fact, several recreation attempts with humans in suits have failed for just this reason because the arms of the human in the suit always look comically short in comparison to the actual Patterson-Gimlin film. And the natural swing of those arms as well looks like it's not just some sort of prosthetics in sleeves. The movement is too smooth and too natural for that. We also see very different torso to leg length ratios in the Patterson-Gimlin film than we would in a regular human being. And any suit being worn by a human that would try to hide that fact would look comical. If you've seen a man in a gorilla suit, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And that ties in nicely with the next reason the film is authentic. A lack of credible hoax evidence. As I said, many people have tried to debunk this film. There was even a team attached to the BBC, and I don't remember all the details right now, that spent weeks trying to recreate a suit identical to what they believed was the suit in the film. And then they tried to recreate the same camera angles and lighting, and they had a, an actor in the suit walk along in the same path that Patty, the creature in the film, walked 
in the original, and it just looked silly. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It didn't look anything like the real film because it was a man in a suit. And even the best production of a suit that was possible at that time by this well-funded broadcasting company could not recreate what they felt was a suit in the original film. That's because it wasn't a suit. The original film showed a real live creature. The details and the realism of the creature make that obvious. We have, as I said earlier, muscle movement. We have a facial structure that doesn't look like any sort of rubber mask in any way, shape, or form. The next reason the film is authentic is the behavioral realism we see from the creature. If it were just a man in a suit, he probably wouldn't have acted so nonchalant. If he were trying to portray this Bigfoot creature, this savage animal that exists in the minds and imagination of many people, then he probably would have roared or growled or acted more aggressive in some way, because it's almost more believable if he had done that. But instead, we have this creature slowly, nonchalantly walking away from the camera, turning once to glance back at the men filming her, and that's just not as believable as the more animalistic approach that we see from Hollywood movies and that sort of thing. To put it another way, the creature's body language in the film doesn't seem forced. It seems natural. It really does appear like an animal in its native environment moving easily and comfortably through that environment. And finally, for anyone who has any lingering doubts about the film's authenticity, Many respected scientists have come forward with statements in support of the film being authentic. Here are some of them. Dr. Grover Krantz, a physical anthropologist at Washington State University. Dr. Jeff Meldrum, who we already mentioned, an autonomist and anthropologist at Idaho State University. Dr. Dmitry Donskoy, a biomechanics expert at the Russian Academy of Sciences. Dr. Esteban Sarmiento, a primatologist at the American Museum of Natural History. Dr. John Napier, a primatologist and physical anthropologist at the Smithsonian Institution. And Dr. Henner Fahrenbach, a biologist at Oregon Regional Primate Research Center. So there you go. Six solid pieces of evidence for the Patterson-Gimlin film's authenticity. Now, does this prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the subject of the film was a real Bigfoot creature, not a man in a suit? There will always be some room for doubt, I believe, in cases like this. But it does give solid reasoning, in my mind, why the evidence is much stronger on the side of the film being authentic rather than a fraud. Thanks very much for watching.